<laughs> Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. All right. Man, you know, we really love Keltex, okay? And I realize that it's been a long time since we've showed off a couple of Keltex on the channel. We do have the new P17 on the way in. I promise we'll do a video on that one just as soon as we can get our hands on it. That's a great 22 long rifle suppressor host. You guys probably saw the video from SHOT Show where we showed that particular one off. This is the kel Gen 2 Sub 2000. It's been out a little while. We are gonna dive into this particular one. I think you guys are gonna really dig it. I definitely would like to take a moment to thank the folks at Big Daddy Unlimited for making sure that we can get in the guns and accessories that we need with all this COVID stuff going on. It's been really tough. Availability has absolutely sucked and it's been really tough to get things. So kudos to them for helping us uh, keep the channel running along and keeping us in things that we need to uh, keep things rolling. Okay, now with this particular gun, I when I picked this one up, I actually had a, a problem with the trigger resetting and I sent this one back to kel -Tec. They were super fast on the turnaround, and uh, I had it back in a couple of days. Everything was good to go, but the trigger wouldn't even reset right out of the box on this particular gun, um, but not a problem now. Everything uh, seems to be running pretty good. I mean, time will tell in, throughout this video and in the future, but the Sub-2000 is a really cool gun in that it folds, okay? So it's a great backpack rifle because it folds up nice and compact, and this is considered a rifle. We can see that it is wearing a Silencer Co. Omega 9K. Uh, we're running this direct thread onto the half by 28 uh, threaded barrel that's on this gun, it's a 16 inch barrel. Uh, relatively decent sight radius. The rear sight is not adjustable. You got good elevation and windage adjustments on the Gen 2. I brought along old Greeny here. <laughs> Now this is my old school Sub 2000. This is a really early Sub 2000. So this is a great one to show. Now it's been Duracoated uh, Norwegian Army Green, but that's okay. I won't make fun of it if you don't. But this is, I affectionately call this gun Greeny. And uh, the front sight uh, base on the original Sub 2000 is very crude in terms of the adjustability. You can see there's no threaded barrel option on the early Sub 2000s. Um, the overall feel and aesthetic of the guns is very, very similar. The lockup system for the wedge for the lever in front of the trigger guard is very, very similar with both guns. With the Gen 2 option, they did make the grip a lot more slim and low profile, very ergonomic. They changed the texture on the grip uh, from that kind of boxy basket weave style texture to a much more simplified texture. The rear stock design is much better thought out with sling points and things like that added, which of course the original doesn't have any form of a sling point on it. You also got a tiny section of pick rail, whatever you might want to use that for. The locking mechanism on the Gen 2 uh, for locking it shut is much, much better. Okay, so that's greatly improved. All right. Also, the forend on the Gen 2 has M lock. Uh, accessory compatibility on each side, as well as full pick rail top and bottom. Not obtrusive though, very lightweight gun. In terms of pistol caliber carbines, the Sub 2000 is among the most compact and light, and for a super, super affordable price point, which is really cool, okay? I'm gonna shoot a couple of mags through this thing, kind of talk as I go, and uh, we'll move right along here. Uh, obviously, Glock magazine compatibility, but you can also get the Sub 2000s. Now they're not as common anymore as they used to be. And I'm not sure if the Gen 2s are available in this, but I know a lot of the Gen 1 Sub 2000s were available in Smith & Wesson 59, uh, Ruger P89, uh, a wide variety of different magazine options, Beretta mags, 92 mags, you name it. Uh, lots of different compatibility with magazines. Uh, but the Glock mag version tends to be the most popular version just because more people have Glock mags laying around than anything else. All right, this is a full-size Model 17 magazine. Uh, it is important distinction to uh, mention on this that this is a Glock 17 version, so it will not work with 26 or 19 magazines. You must have full-length 17 mags at a minimum to work in this gun. Norma 115 grain FMJ.
There is no last round bolt hold open with the Sub 2000. The sights can be a little bit weird to pick up. I noticed that on both my Gen 1 and Gen 2 Sub 2000, it requires the front sight base to be almost completely bottomed out to zero, and that tends to be the case between both the Gen 1 and Gen 2. All right, Glock magazines. All right, we'll keep running the test here. Uh, basically, the bolt is just a huge cylindrical, <laughs> you know, almost like a sub gun uh, bolt that you would see in a Sten, right? Okay, it's just a big old hunk of reciprocating mass. Uh, and it is a very heavy bolt. Uh, the spring is pretty stout. Uh, if you're a person that maybe lacks a little bit of upper body strength, you might find the way that this gun charges to be a little bit uh, unorthodox, okay? Um, it probably helps to set the rifle on a table and pull back while resting the rifle on a table if you need to, or you can even just put it against your hip and pull back. Uh, it is a very stout spring, but you can lock it up and to the right Okay, and it locks the bolt to the rear, and that makes inserting magazines and manipulating the gun a little bit easier. It's a push-button safety right here. It's in a very intuitive spot to get to. All right, so we can load the magazine. Now, the cool thing about running this gun the way we are is I can fold this and put this in a pack. Okay, I can leave the bolt to the rear if I want. Uh, I've tried transporting it like that before, but the issue is that all it takes is a little bit of a bump, Okay, and that bolt flies forward and jettisons one of your rounds out of the magazine for one, but then two, the gun's not in the condition you think it is when you go to unfold it, and now you've got to manipulate the gun, pull the bolt to the rear or whatever. So that's the only bad thing with the way that bolt locks is if it's in a backpack or a satchel, you will inadvertently uh, you know, work that loose. Okay, so it's probably best to just store it in this condition, and then when you deploy it, go up, just charge it, you're good to go. Once it's unfolded, remove the safety and shoot the gun. All out. All right, I am noticing a considerable amount of heat transfer down through uh, the rifle. So. It is a lot of polymer used in the construction of this gun. So it equates to a very lightweight gun. This is not something I would go and shoot, you know, a thousand rounds through in one sitting, you know, back to back magazines or whatever. I would really equate the Sub 2000 to being a kind of a backup uh, slash backpacking gun where you want to have a gun on you, but you don't, you know, you're not going out to shoot at the range, but you want to have you maybe a 30 round uh, mag of, you know, spear gold dot or something in a good semi-auto with a can or something. You know, yeah, it's a good survival gun, uh, nice and lightweight, great to throw in the backpack, um, very shootable. I would put the sights and the overall feel of the gun, the trigger bow on this uh, particular rifle does flex considerably. Okay, so there's a good bit of flex. I know that there are some aftermarket companies you can order different trigger bows uh, through for the uh, Sub 2000. That is a drastic improvement over the standard bow. It is a considerable amount of flex. The trigger creeps a good bit. It's got a clean break, but it is a relatively heavy trigger. Uh, it's not something I would consider like a match grade gun or a fancy, you know, PCC. It's a real basic working man's P PCC. Now, what I've been wanting to do in some of our videos, okay? Now I have to admit, there was a few videos where we selected a knife to go along with each gun that we're showing off, and I actually forgot to show off a few of the other ones, but we actually, uh, we paired up a knife with this particular gun, and kind of going with the survival rifle slash working man's gun, like kind of working man's price, I chose this Mora Survival Basic. This is one of their full tangs. Stainless steel, uh, fire strike and spline, Nice, good quality leather sheath. This is a fantastic piece of cutlery um, that's not gonna break the bank. Uh, really good solid knife that can do a wide variety of different tasks, um, but is not gonna you know, make you go broke or anything. So there's your more of basic survival, full tang survival knife to go with your kel Sub 2000. This is a great truck gun option, okay? Backpack gun, that sort of thing. This would be a good gun to have on a boat where let's say that uh, size and weight is a concern when you're trying to control the overall loadout of your boat. 
and making sure that you don't have too much weight. That's always a concern, right? This would be a good pilot survival rifle for the same reason. Pilots, airplanes, you know, you, you gotta really control that weight. So this is a way to do so by keeping it nice and lightweight. That's some of those Federal 150 grain Simtex, the red rounds. And I'm gonna tell you something right now, with this can, absolutely purrs like a kitten, really nice recoil, does not kick bad at all, very easy to shoot and very quiet, very pleasing to the ear with this Omega 9K suppressor attached to this gun. Now I will say that you can mount an optic on this gun if you want. You do have the pick rail through and throughout on top. Now um, that does leave a little bit of an issue because then it becomes difficult to fold it. Now there are some rail systems that are made for this gun that can actually articulate out of the way to fold the optic out of the way. Personally, I mean, although you, you may get a little bit better functionality out of the gun with an optic on it, I feel like this gun is best suited running it with irons and keeping it low profile and nice and small and being able to fold the gun and really holding true to the original design aspects of what the gun was made to do. In my opinion, of course. All right, no last round bolt hold open. Really cool stuff. All right, more of the normal 115 grain ball. We'll try this stuff out. Little sub 2000s running really good in terms of reliability. Haven't really had any major issues. Uh, trigger's working well. That trigger flex is a little concerning to me, but all in all, not terrible. Nice. The full power ammo definitely got a good bit of a little more recoil. Okay, uh, you know, a nine is, is not really gonna be too bad in terms of felt recoil in general at all anyway. Um, but those 150s is really where this thing sings. All right, so I got one last mag of uh, 150s there. I like the Sub 2000. I think that they fill a very specific and important niche uh, for gun owners and that, you know, it's a nice survival gun that is nice and low recoil, reasonably cheap to shoot, good magazine availability, and it doesn't cost a lot of money. That's one of the cool things about it. So as a suppressor host, um, you know, if you didn't have a lot of money to spend, this probably would be a great option, okay? Uh, with the threaded barrel, you do get to suppress it. All right, one last mag. Our poor little, <laughs> our poor Omega 9K is in need of maintenance where it's puking carbon chunks all over the table, but she's working, okay. All right, 150s, 80 yards. All right, sodas, just for fun. All right, I will say that if you don't have good eyesight or if you have difficulty seeing iron sights, this is definitely a little bit harder of a gun to get behind. Um, so that's definitely a consideration, but if you require a red dot, if you've got you know, a little bit poor vision or failing vision, um, you can certainly mount a red dot on this thing if you want. The irons are functional. Uh, they are a little hard to pick up. 
I found myself, you know, with transitioning between targets, almost kind of blending in between the ears and the front sight and kind of getting those mixed up a bit. And I had to kind of reacquire the sight picture a few times. Um, and I'm a guy that's very familiar with the Sub 2000 because I've shot a lot of rounds through these things over the years. Just something to consider. Despite the perceived and minor shortcomings of the platform, it is a great gun that's very affordable and a great option for anybody that wants a PCC they can suppress and fold up and put into a backpack. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. You guys are amazing who support us. Thank you so much, all of our Patreon supporters, those of you who purchase t-shirts over on Ballistic Inc., as well as, hey, we got some great man cans over on the site for sale. If you love the channel and you love what we do and you see value in what we do and you wish to support us, go over and check out a man can. There's some great boxes. I know you guys are gonna love hand-picked stuff by us. Have a great day. We'll see you soon.